Tennessee Wildcast is live on the air with the latest on hunting, fishing, boating, and all things outdoors. Make welcome your host, drummer and outdoor expert novice, Jason Harmon. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Tennessee Wildcast. We're glad you're tuning in, and we are live on Facebook right now. And thank you all for watching there. Uh, we're pretty excited about today's show. We've got some... Uh, information that you're going to look forward to having i think some of you may be excited about it some of you may not be and that's okay but um tennessee is offering a a velvet deer hunt antler deer still in velvet are going to be able to be chased on august 24th 25th 26th so we're going to get into all those details today and uh but first we want to introduce our guests and i'll pan back out you've seen them when we started the show but uh mr Dale Grandstaff there on the end. He is our uh, District 21 captain. And Mr. Eric Anderson, Sumner County officer. Thank you guys for being here. Glad to be here. Eric, are you here? Oh, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> i just give you a hard time. Um, uh, you guys are out in the field every day, uh, you know, working the, the wildlife, and, and we appreciate the work you all do, but... Um, and appreciate y'all being here and we're going to talk about the the velvet hunt and opportunities around it and maybe a little bit of biology about why they have velvet and the life of a deer so anyway uh first let's hit the uh the details on the uh, what's legal and what's not what days and all that kind of stuff so uh dale let's let's push it over to you if you don't mind um give us the details around the uh, three-day hunt well this 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 hunt was um placed at the end of august which should allow everybody and, and those dates are the 24th 25th and 26th of august uh, and those dates were kind of chosen uh in order to allow people to harvest one that should still have velvet on its antlers they're going to start dropping some velvet you may even see a deer out of velvet on this hunt and that deer is legal to harvest so just keep that in mind just because it doesn't have velvet doesn't mean you can't take it so uh it was it was placed at the end of august to allow people to harvest one with velvet some up most of them will still have velvet on um but going into the following week and the fall and the week after they're going to start dropping it um their racks are going to be pretty solid uh at the end of august they're already right now they're already solid and uh, uh you just need to be careful if you shoot one uh in handling it as far as dragging it or, or doing anything with it uh i would figure out a way to get it out of the woods without touching the velvet mm -hmm. yeah um yeah they're going to be um it's going to be a little different it's not going to be the the normal hard bone antler that you're used to dragging out of the woods and and even the, the cape is going to be thinner um uh, it's going to be a totally different experience um i've got a, a video that i want to show and i'm going to do that right now this is uh mr uh chris butt uh He's a taxidermist here local, and he's helped us out quite a bit with some videos and some information, and, and he's going to show us today um, or tell us his side of things from a taxidermist standpoint, and then we'll come back. Uh, and, and that's important. Just make sure you contact your taxidermist maybe prior to, to, to going on this hunt. Right. And they'll give you some pointers on what you need to do before you bring it into them. Okay. Well, let's cut to this, and then we'll we'll come back. And we're back. Looks like we got a glitch on the video. So we're not going to show that today. Sorry about that. So anyway, his, his, what he was going to tell us about was some of the stuff you'd already mentioned, but not to drag it, um, not to drag it by a certain part of the antler, not to hold it by this part or that part. And that it's the, the fur is going to be tender and could flake off, could pull off. If whatever you can do, avoid touching the antlers. Right. Uh, that the velvet, will uh it'll rub it'll break it'll it'll come off if you put a lot of pressure on it so uh figure out a way to get it out of the woods without pulling it and it's going to be really hot right it's going to be hot so what's the key to that getting it getting it cooled down quick right yeah Eric, you probably talked have you talked to some of your taxidermists already about a few what they need to do yeah, yeah. and they're, they're getting ready and i think information like we're talking about today is key to to get hunters ready and the preparation not only starts with thinking about the transporting of the deer but it goes all the way back to practicing your archery skills because if you make that poor shot in August, it's not going to be as forgiving as it is in September 
like because of the reasons we're talking about and uh, including the spoilage of the meat. Mm-hmm. So making that that key shot to retrieve that animal quick is, is of paramount importance. But also, uh, like Dale said, maybe go ahead and call your taxidermist. Um, let he or she know you're you're going to be bringing an animal in, hopefully, and um, see if they're going to be open later, uh, have later business hours. You know, can you swing it by that evening if you recover it later in the end of the, the nighttime? Can you go ahead and take it after hours? Do they have something set up for that? If not, uh, I know in, in Gallatin, um, at Poindexter's, they have a walk-in cooler, and they allow hunters to come after after business hours and, and drop their animals out in that, at, drop them off and put them in that cooler. So whatever arrangements you need to make, all that prep work needs to be done well before you get into the stand. But it, but it, like I said, it starts with uh, practicing. Get on the range and start taking those shots and uh, practice while it's hot. Don't. It, it sounds kind of funny, but you can relate it to sports. You know, mm-hmm. if you start, if you practice like you play. So I would encourage people to, to make yourself a little uncomfortable as far as the heat and uh, get used to that environment. Uh, there's going to be bugs. But anyway, just whatever you need to do to make yourself comfortable with your shot, know your limits, and, and practice, 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 because the heat is, is pretty unforgiving after the animal goes out there. And speaking of heat and the bugs and all that, uh, ticks are still going to be out, and they're going to be – you mentioned earlier we were just talking off camera, but the the – the deer are going to be covered in ticks more than likely. And that's one thing I was going to make a point of. This hunt is not for everyone. Uh, some people are excited about it, and some people are, are not going to go on this hunt at all. Uh, they're going to be covered in ticks. It's going to be hot. There's going to be mosquitoes. It's going to be uh, a rough hunt. It's not going to be an easy uh, go out and shoot a velvet buck. Mm-hmm. So um, um, for those of you that are excited about it, uh, prepare for <laughs> the bugs, mosquitoes, the ticks. Uh, and, and get ready for that. And as soon as you kill this deer, uh, you are going to uh, start seeing the ticks crawl. So they're going to try to come off of it. And one point that Eric made as far as taking these deer and put them in a cooler, that's another th- step that you need to think about. If I shot a really nice buck and it had velvet, I would go get a pillow from the dollar store or some cheap cloth, and, and if I'm going to drag it into a cooler, I'd lay its head on it soft soft uh, cushion yeah uh, if you're going to hang it up don't let the antlers touch the uh touch the floor because it'll it'll damage the velvet that's uh one thing that that chris was going uh the head was he was going to tell us about in that video that didn't play he was going to tell us that um you know especially the handling part of it but get it cooled down as quick as you can and um to cape it out cape it out as quick as you can if you can cape it out and cut it off below the neck and get it to him or get it in the freezer in a bag as quickly as possible, that's the best the best route. Yeah. Uh, so the faster you can get it out of the woods and and, and caped out and cooled down, the you know, better off you're going to be. Absolutely. Um, I was showing a few pictures on the, on the screen here. Um, that's a nice um, velvet deer and on a trail cam shot that uh, Barry Cross uh, shared with us. And, uh, and Eric had sent in a few. I'm going to show those to the folks at home. Tell us about some of these deer, Eric. Well, these deer are, uh, these are photographs I've taken over the past uh, couple weeks in, in and around Sumner County. Uh, the reason I wanted to, two reasons I wanted to share those with you and with, with everybody watching is, number one, to get an idea of what, what, these, what the velvet antlers are looking like uh, this time of year and how, and they may change a little bit, tighten up just a little bit before the hunt, but, but also uh, the age class of deer that we have in, in and around the state these deer are pretty unique in that they're in areas that, that are not heavily hunted so they're allowed to get older it, it's a learning tool to show if if and when they're allowed to grow that they can you know we're, we're we're growing trophy deer there's no doubt about it they just need time so uh, that's a pretty cool deer there with the drop times yeah yeah he he has a history i was sharing with you that story earlier he had been uh attempted to be uh, shot before season a couple years ago as a result of that injury he grew those double drop times and he eventually was harvested legally with archery equipment last year so uh, he, he was a really cool deer he was probably four and a half years old when he was harvested so and this is his cousin right yeah yeah he uh <laughs> <laughs> he that's an interesting rack and uh the the gentleman that that put me onto that deer that, that told me where he was at where we could go photograph it has nicknamed that deer kramer okay so you can put those pieces together you can see why <laughs> Um, but again, just, just a, he's a very old deer. Uh, if you could see the whole body, I don't have that picture here, but uh, there's lots of traits that that, a lot, that you can easily see his age. But but again, just age structure. If you'll just if you just pass them, which what kind of ties into this uh, the the velvet hunt that the 
antlers are going to look a little bit different. They're going to present a little more mass mm -hmm. when you see them. So I would encourage hunters that, that do practice management that are passing uh, whatever age structure is appropriate for them because a trophy to one is not a trophy to another. Right. But I would encourage folks not to get too excited to to go away from their, their, own, um, their own habits, their own – um, standards, I guess you would say. In other words, a, a two and a half year old in velvet is going to look more impressive than a two and a half year old out of velvet. And um, just kind of stick to your gun, so to speak. And mm -hmm. if you if you're practicing those um, management practices to to pass younger deer, I wouldn't take one just because he he is in velvet. You know, don't don't let that be the novelty that that kind of gets out of there. Because I do feel like we're going to have a lot of younger deer harvested. And like I said a minute ago, my trophy is probably different than your trophy, so I'm not telling anybody what to what to shoot. But definitely just stick to your to your practice, your management practices, and, and study the traits of the animal other than the antlers to determine the uh, the age structure, and, and then make your decision based on that. Awesome. That's and and to follow up on that, um, these bucks on this antlered hunt in August or velvet hunt in August, they're going to count towards your statewide bag limit. Okay. So you can take both of your bucks during this early uh, season we have. Uh, so you could take one on Friday, one on Saturday, and you're finished for the season. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind. Uh, like like Eric said, don't let the uh, the lure of a velvet rack kind of uh, keep you from being able to hunt the rest of the season. That's good information. And I want to recap all that right before we close out the show, just to make sure everybody knows, you know, step by step what they can and can't do. Um, you brought in a, an antler or a velvet antler deer here that uh, – that uh, was a roadkill, I guess. This is a roadkill, and, and the reason I brought this in is to give everybody an idea. Uh, this deer was run over the first week of August a couple of years ago, uh, and you can see on, I think, this side, it, this, mm -hmm. this, uh, this deer's right outside edge of the beam is what hit the pavement. And early August, they're still pretty, they're already solid. So um, if this had been uh, in July, early July, it would have probably been, uh, broken it broke it up and and uh it will looked a lot different but it's already solid uh i got to the deer within uh two hours probably and so uh loaded it up it it was in the back of my truck for probably a couple of hours until i got to the taxidermist so about four hours in august and and you can see it turned out pretty good yeah got it to the taxidermist and they worked on it um but early august they're already pretty solid um and when you shoot one in late August, there, there's not going to be any droop. There's not going to be any uh, worry with this thing not being solid inside. And that's kind of the one thing I wanted to show people is already in early August, they're already solid. They just still have velvet on them. And like you said, they could could possibly be some of it rubbed off and maybe all yeah. of it rubbed off. So those are still legal legal animals to take. But. And you could, see it, you could see a bloody racked deer come walking through the woods and wonder what is going on. But once this process starts this velvet coming off mm -hmm. it only takes a few hours for it to all come off okay so uh it could be a process of a couple of hours or it could be a two-day ordeal for them trying to get it all off but but most of the time it's going to come off pretty quick and be hanging around their face and they're going to be eating it and chewing it and trying to get it off uh so if you see something coming through the woods it's got a bloody looking rack and a lot of stuff running its face it's probably coming off and that's good information that we i don't think we've mentioned there's actually blood running through those antlers and they're really soft you know before before they harden up and, yeah. and lose that velvet, um, you can't. They would. They would. Stuff wouldn't be able to grow. The velvet wouldn't be able to grow, right? If if the blood wasn't there. And correct. That's that's how it's how it all works. Um, it, it's pretty cool to see some thermal imaging video of these deer in the summertime. They glow mm -hmm. like crazy. I mean, they stick out. You can see them. Uh, they'll be laying in a bean field, think they're hid because their body and eyesight is below the beans, but their racks are sticking up and just like glowing out there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I wanted to hit on the the life cycle of uh, of a buck. Um, about you know, at what age do they start growing antlers, and then once they do, what's the the year cycle of that? And and do they drop them, or do they, you know, some people don't know that they drop the antlers and they grow them back and they get bigger and bigger every year, or or they'll grow back similar to the same size. And can you go over that a little bit? And then Eric and and Dale, you can pass it back and forth there. But um, I, I'll I'll just go over a little bit of it and jump in with the uh, what you've seen like with the buck that had the drops, how they okay. can change. But uh, basically, the, the at six months old, they may have buttons sticking out. Uh, they may not have buttons sticking out. And a button is just a little piece of hard antler that's broken the skin, right. and, and that will be their first so-called rack. Um, 
in the springtime, usually around anywhere from January, February, March, they'll drop anything they've got on their head that's hard bone. And uh, uh, around April, May, they start growing their rack back. And at a year and a half, they'll have some kind of a visible rack sticking up uh, through the summer into August. Um, usually that first year, it's going to be a smaller rack. Second year, it's going to be a little bit bigger. Third year, a little bigger, usually, mm -hmm. uh, unless they're damaged or something's wrong. Uh, and then my thought is in this area, at four and a half and five and a half, they're going to exhibit pretty much what their rack will always be. It may change back and forth a little bit, but four and a half, five and a half, six and a half, as long as they've got that age, they're going to grow a usually a decent rack uh, unless there's some limiting factor. Um, and then they will uh, shed the velvet off usually late August, early September, but for sure it's usually gone uh, by mid-September when mm -hmm. we have our regular opener of archery season, which is September 22nd this year. Yeah. So uh, that by the time we have our normal fourth Saturday in September opener, it's always normally off. Uh, they'll go into the rut. They'll, they'll polish their antlers up. They'll go into the rut in late October, usually in this area, and, and start hitting it pretty hard early November. During the muzzleloader season. During the muzzleloader season, they're, they're going good, and even through Thanksgiving, pretty good. In different parts of states, it's different, but around this Nashville area. Um, and then they'll go into December if they haven't had a hard rut. Uh, they'll go into December, maybe had it hit a second rut there. And in January, February, March, you can expect them as the daylight starts to increase. Longer days after December 21st starts to increase. Their testosterone levels go down in their body, and it triggers their antlers to fall off. Okay. And when they fall off, they'll start regrowing again April, May. Awesome. That's pretty crazy that that, that can happen all in one year. And one they can change, also. and that's that's what I was saying. Mention that, that deer that you kind of had the, a history the drop with. Time. Yeah. Yeah. He was just a real pretty mainframe eight-pointer with crab claws for two years that we took photographs of him. And then uh, when he was shot before season with archery, um, he survived that shot. But when he came back to his home range or his home area where we always saw the deer mm -hmm. that following summer, he had kept the same structure of the rack, but he the, the drop tines showed up. Um, pretty so much as think, a result of the injury, okay, it, you it, think that's it altered that, that growth. There's another real young deer that I noticed the other day who has a, a tumor on his back right leg, but his left antler is, and, his, and that right side is completely normal. Like he, he would be an eight-pointer, but his left antler is, has grown straight up and then just kind of does some weird stuff because that, that injury on the right side affects the antler on the left side and, you know, vice versa. So, the, the yeah, the injuries and, and, and nourishment will also have a – a big impact on that also right that that reminded me i get questions all the time on facebook you know i've got this injured deer or this deer has a tumor or this deer has these spots or these warts or something we don't uh go out and and try to fix that or help that deer mainly we let them let nature take its course Let's right let nature take its course yeah unfortunately we really we have one rehabilitator in that that's permitted in and correct me if i'm wrong dale that's it's in middle tennessee and they're located here in nashville they're constantly taking in animals they, they'll never say no unless they physically don't have the room for them and with with deer the volume that, of calls that we receive mm -hmm. obviously the, the healthy population we have it would be impossible to try to um to take care of every single injury that we come across so when i receive those calls in my county uh, i always ask a few key questions um to make sure it's a humane decision to allow the animal to to, to live because ultimately we would want to put that animal down. We, don't, we want to do the right thing. But if the animal is able to get around, it's able to um, get away from, from predators or avoid danger, if it's able to get around and, and feed itself and graze, then, you know, let's just let it, nature take its course. I've seen uh, at least two different does that have been hit by cars, lost a leg, and by the next year they were healthy and back to having offspring. Mm -hmm. And they're, yeah, they, they, they've they lost an, a leg and they're, they're hopping around, but they're – they're moving on you know yeah. they're doing fine so we try to try to give them a, a fighting chance they can adapt very very easily um i, I was on look, looking at facebook the other day and there was this bear walking around on two legs and they said it had been hit by a car so the front legs didn't work so it, it had learned to walk on its hind legs so it looked like a person walking around in the right. streets i mean it was in a neighborhood but they're anyway, resilient they, they Mo can most of the time a deer if you see one come through the woods and he's got a really messed up gnarly rack that grew that way it wasn't busted up from maybe it hit by a car but it grew that way he's going to have some kind of damage to his body 
it's not going to be a genetic thing. It's going to be damage to his body that created that gnarly, crazy-looking rack mm-hmm. other than the cluster bucks, but but it's a little different. Uh, you, you just have to look at them, and you can tell they're different. Well, talk about the cluster bucks. Since you mentioned that, you know, we've had quite a few killed here in Tennessee, Middle Tennessee, a lot, you know, and we've had a pretty cool display. I don't know if, you got, if you've been able to see that on Facebook earlier in the year, but um, – and, Tuck, and and uh, Stephen Tucker has taken what is pending world record. So it, it should. I think they're going to have their their meeting in the fall this year of 2019. Okay. Instead of the spring of 19. So I think that meeting is going to be in the fall. Uh, but those deer, I expect another one to be killed this year or next year, no doubt, mm-hmm. because there's some out there. We've seen some. So the deer are around. There's more out there. Uh, it's just a matter of someone getting one. Yeah, it's it's uh, neat to see. What's uh, your opinion on that, Eric? What do you think? Somebody's going to probably get one <laughs> this year, next year. I believe they I, will. I'm not saying it will be as big as Stevens, but but yes, I think there will be there will be a number of good ones. Yeah, it sounds taken. like I, you I've got your eye on one. I, <laughs> yeah, I'll be honest with you. There is a, a deer in Sumner County, and it's not. Let's say it's less than five miles from where uh, Stephen got his big buck. And this deer last year, we first got eyes on him. Has he was? I would estimate year and a half, two and a half at the most. Very young deer. And got some good pictures of him. He had 24 points, and just just a young deer. And mm-hmm. watched him all through the winter. Watched him early, early spring before he shed those antlers. And I, I looked for those antlers, couldn't find them. And I'm looking for him right now. I'm I'm, I'm very eager to see what he looks like as a three year old, or if he's a two year old. Um, he but he has those traits, that cluster trait. I want to see a. Did he carry it over to this next year? And then b. How big is he? Mm-hmm. And he just it. As soon as I saw the deer, it had a lot of the very if you zoomed in on picture side by side, some very, very specific things about his rack that was very similar to Stevens. If you broke down the antlers into, you know, this webbing here and this happened, you know, these things, very similar. They were very similar. Very similar. Wow. So I think they're they're cousins at, at the least. But but I, I I wish I could have had a picture of him to show you right now of him this year. I'm still looking for him. Yeah. But he's out there. He's out there. It's uh, we were uh, I had a chance to go by the Wonders of Wildlife Museum there in Springfield uh, a couple weeks ago and. And this the the deer in that that museum the the size the the clusters and then just the mass and you think how does Stevens Tucker Tucker's deer beat out those but it's just the craziness of the it is it's time length yeah. time length gives that deer its score it's a there's a lot of points but each point is long mm-hmm. it's not a little one inch or two inch point they're all three four five inches long that's what gives it the high score yeah all right well let's um let's. You mentioned this before the show, and we wanted to make sure we hit on that. But to make sure you look at the guide, and that the 24th, 25th, and 26th is a special season, and you wanted to hit on that to make sure people understand what they can and can't do. And I want to make sure it's clear before we close out today. Yeah, so Eric and I will go down and just break it down. It's page 32 of the hunting guide, and uh, uh, the it's it's the deer hunting, uh, big game hunting, but but for deer. And the first one you're going to see is the young sportsman gun muzzler archery. That's in October. Uh, but the one thing that we really want to point out today was the archery private lands only August 24th, 25th, and 26th. And private lands only means uh, if you have access to someone's farm, that's private land. If you own land, that's private land. Uh, it's not our wildlife management areas. It's not places like Cross Creeks. It's not TVA land. It's not core land. It's privately owned land only. Uh, that's important for people to know. It's a still a two buck limit. So if you take, and it's one per day, one buck per day. Um, so if you take one on Friday, you still have one left for the entire hunting season this year. So keep that in mind. It's not a bonus buck. It's not a bonus buck. So definitely if you take both of your bucks on this hunt, you're finished. Um, so uh, you can still doe hunt, yep. or maybe if you're drawn for a, a, a special bonus uh, hunt, then you can go on that. But otherwise, you're finished buck hunting for the season. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, that Saturday is free hunting day in the state, so no license required for uh, residents of this state. Uh, and uh, and I'm sure there will be a few people to take advantage of that. But most people that are going to go on this hunt, I'm, I'm going to guess, are going to have License. License, yeah, and most of them. Uh, to participate on free hunting day, you must be hunter head certified or have the apprentice license, correct? That's correct. All right. And then we'll just go on down. The, the regular archery season starts on September 22nd. Yeah, hit on yep. that, Eric. Yeah. Runs September 22nd through October 26th uh, in Unit L, which is where we're sitting today. Three antlerless deer can be taken per day. 
the same uh, statewide bag limit applies, two bucks per year, one per day, and um, go into your respective unit, which is uh, designated there on the right, mm-hmm. to see what your antlers, antlerless harvest would be. Those vary cr- throughout the state, yeah. Correct, yeah. So I'm not going to touch on each one of those individually, but just reference this chart. And um, and then that r- rut period when the when the bucks start moving a little bit more and have a chance at a bigger bigger deer is November third muzzleloader season. That's right, man. That's a that's a magical time. Yeah, <laughs> and we see this every year. Definitely remember that October 29th through November the second is archery only. Uh-huh. A lot of people will think archery ends on October the twenty sixth. We have the youth hunt on October twenty seventh, twenty eighth, and the next day it's muzzleloader. It's not. It goes back to archery. It goes back to archery. So yeah. keep that in mind. That's there's a lot of people that shoot some good deer with a muzzleloader that week that they they lose that deer because it's it's archery only. And then following that uh, muzzleloader season on the 16th of November, the next day, 17th of November is opens up gun and you can hunt gun muzzleloader archery anything during this time period through the January 6th. Uh, three does a day in unit L and the doe or antlerless bag limit varies. Uh, from there on out but uh remember your two buck limit it still applies and, and then and look there's at that a special state, hunt look at the state up above on this page mm-hmm. it, if you don't know where you're going but you know the county you're in just find the county and you'll know what unit you're going to be hunting in right makes it makes it real easy and then that uh last last week there's a special unit ale hunt hit on that eric that's that, in your area that, yep that's going to be a private lands only um antlerless only in unit ale so Similar to our archery hunt, it's private only, no WMAs, antlerless only. You know, it's a good chance to fill the freezer up late seasons, good and cold. So uh, that's this will be our third year, I believe, for that yeah. hunt. Yeah, I think that's been well received, and folks like that extra week to uh, put a few does in the freezer. Yep. So, well, I appreciate you guys being with us today, and and hopefully that clarifies uh, the velvet season, the velvet hunt, and also highlights the rest of the year and. Uh, thank you guys for what you do and uh, keeping us safe out in the outdoors. And uh, always enjoy being here. Appreciate yeah. you having us, yeah. Yeah. So this is uh, the Velvet Edition of Tennessee Wildcast, and we thank y'all for being here. Uh, join us next week. It will be here same time, same place. And remember to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Visit our website, tnwildlife.org. That's uh, where you can get up to date and find all the information you need. So and albinos always illegal to take. There you go. <laughs> You heard it. (laughs) Albino's illegal. All right. We'll see y'all next time on Tennessee Wildcast. Thanks for tuning in. Stay connected with TWRA by visiting our website at tnwildlife.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hey, it's all about Tennessee wildlife. It's what we do. Tennessee Wildcast will be on the air again next week. We'll see you then.